least um, actually engineer this kind of UFO technology and, and conquer the world? Are we willing to take that chance? Well, I think, uh, I, I, again, I, as far as military applications, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they are being used already. Maybe, uh, we, don't, you know, we don't know, maybe they're being used in a surveillance capacity. Um, as far as, um, you know, weapons that could be associated with, uh, with such uh, vehicles, one would have to think that if the propulsion system uh, is as sophisticated as it would need to be to have these vehicles just hover, stop, uh, noiselessly uh, take off at right angles, uh, do three to five to six to 20,000 miles an hour, one would think that the, the military application uh, would then take the form of, rather than rockets and, uh, and uh, projectiles, uh, that <coughs> probably a, a particle beam uh, would, would be used, some kind of a, a laser, some kind of a, 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 a disabling beam to disable equipment to uh, cause disorientation among men and troops. And of course we have seen no, no evidence of this. <clears throat> I'm not sure that uh, the U.S. military would want to play that card right now because after all the war in Iraq really is a conventional war. We have air superiority there already. Um, there is no Iraqi Air Force. There was no Iraqi Air Force. We, in the United States, uh, we have air superiority basically over the rest of the world. I'm sure there's some pretty hot shot MiG pilots in, in China and Russia. Um, but uh, I think if you put our Air Force up against any Air Force on this planet, we would prevail without the use of, uh, of advanced uh, technology of the type, type we're speaking of. So. Um, I think that uh, the U.S., if they have these things, they would probably save them for a, um, a more drastic confrontation, uh, perhaps a confrontation with um, beings that have the potential to uh, be superior uh, over us in terms of uh, the applications of, of, av of aviation today. So maybe these triangles, the big black deltas, the rectangles, are the next wave of the U.S. military's defense against what some might perceive as an extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional threat. Maybe these weapons or these flight systems now are being prepared to confront um, a race of superior beings that, uh, that could have designs on the planet that are malevolent. Uh, you know, uh, I, I believe, I, I think it was Lord Hill Norton or one of the British Air Force uh, Defense Ministry staff who was assigned to study UFOs in the 50s, after he retired, he said that in his estimation there were 23 different species of being visiting, visiting the planet in, in, you know, numerous types of vessels. Um, we know from the, uh, the NASA UFO studies that, that, that you've done, uh, when I, and I think that that theory, if, you know, there's, there, there's nothing wrong with that that theory that I, that I can see that doesn't point to what, what you postulate, and that is that there are benevolent beings that are trying to heal the planet, hence the, 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 the size of these ships that were seen in the STS uh, cameras, uh, and uh, the fact that the ozone has holes in it, the fact that water could be a healing element there. Uh, what are these, uh, these lifesaver-shaped little dropostone-shaped ships conveying to our planet? Well, you know, uh, we see them coming into the atmosphere and uh, on, the, on the STS tapes and, and other cam forms of, uh, of exposure. They're not releasing uh, personnel, they're not releasing projectiles, and um, no harm has come to the planet, um, you know, through their intervention. So one, one can assume perhaps that maybe there are benevolent beings out there and malevolent beings out there. And maybe the United States government is preparing uh, weapon systems to deal with the malevolent beings. Ronald Reagan <coughs> said in a speech, he said, what if there were a species from another planet that was threatening us? We would all find a way to work together. And one can only think about the Star Wars system and the fact that there we had uh, satellite-mounted cannon. Well, they'd be good for shooting down rockets. They also might be good for shooting down uh, other uh, invasive vehicles that are coming into our, our, our atmosphere. Ronald Reagan himself spoke about a UFO sighting that he had when he was governor of California 
in the Beach King Air that they used to use. Uh, they were coming from Sacramento. His wife was with him, uh, Sacramento to, um, to Los Angeles, and uh, a saucer clocked the, the plane for a good 45 minutes. And Reagan uh, spoke of it to, to a lot of people. Um, and I think uh, maybe, you know, part of his motivation in getting the, the uh, Star Wars weapon system up might have been that to prepare ourselves for the day when uh, other beings might, might come to this planet with designs of, who knows, taking minerals without authorization, taking people. Uh, you know, we, uh, we'll, we'll, we're probably just going to have to wait to see. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Colonel Corso makes it clear that the Reagan administration's strategic defense initiative, appropriately dubbed Star Wars, was primarily designed for use against the alien intruders. His contemporary successor, the anti-missile missile defense system, is also being designed with that as one of its principal objectives. It is true that a case can be made for attempting to provide a shield against the Russians and Chinese, although everyone knows that the Russians are not going to embark on a policy which res would result in their total destruction. It is equally true that they, too, are aware of the visitors and know that the perceived threat from the visitors has been a major consideration in the planning of the anti-missile system. And the incident in question, um, as at least from my perspective, uh, almost ignited uh, a nuclear war, and that was uh, five unidentified objects were uh, picked up on radar coming in over the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Northern California, uh, Southern Washington, Oregon uh, area. Uh, as these objects approached the uh, coast, uh, Strategic Air Command went on a um, uh, alert. Uh, we were in a defense condition or what is referred to as a DEFCON um, De defense condition three, which means that the nuclear forces were ready, but they weren't on a ready stated alert. Uh, we elevated that to uh, defense condition four. Defense condition five is launch. When we went on our alert, the Russians were also monitoring our nuclear armed forces as we were theirs. And so they knew that our bombers had gone to fail safe. They knew that the launch codes had been given. They also knew that the hatches on the ICBM missiles had been removed and that we were getting ready to do a, uh, a launch. Uh, I know that Nixon, uh, President Richard Milhouse Nixon, picked up the phone and called the Kremlin. The White House notified the Kremlin that these objects were not, and I repeat, not a uh, preemptive launch by us, that uh, they too, the Russians, uh, had been tracking these objects as they came in over the Bering Sea. Probably moved a hundred miles in a matter of a second or two. When we look at alien abduction, I mean the idea of a, of a human being being taken and uh, having an implant inserted into their body, um, I often think of how biologists, um, how we tag whales, you know, we put a, a chip on a whale and we can track them via satellite, and also how, you know, we go into a, a frog's pond and we pull out the frog and we spread it out on the table. Remember in biology class we used to do this and, you know, stick the little needles in his legs and cut them open. I mean, that's how we look at um, an, another life form in another world. So is it really a sign of violence uh, and negativity? that an extraterrestrial civilization is coming to Earth and doing the same to us, putting computer chip implants on us to track us, know where we are, study our species, do a little bit of biological experimentation. I mean, I know for us it's horrific, I and mean, it's absolutely a violent thing for us as humans, but from their perspective, do you really think that they're being violent? Well, 
Again, I, I, I have to go back to some of them might be here for good purposes, uh, genuinely interested in, in perhaps helping main, 